This week on I Watch This As An Adult Movie Reviews, I review the 1991 comedy House Party 2. Don't forget to support the show on Patreon. That's Patreon backslash I Watch This As An Adult, where you get access to special content. Your support means a lot. Thank you. What is the perfect movie franchise? Does such a thing truly exist? The license to watch podcast sets out to answer that age-old question. Join comedians Matt McGregor, Harris McCabe, and Colin Shaw as they dissect your favorite film franchises one movie at a time. Along for the ride is a different film industry guest for every episode. Listen as the boys play judge, jury, and executioner and decide which of your favorite movie franchises are worthy of a license to watch. Brothers, I can hunt a boat's face! I want to thank all of you for making it possible for me to go to college. I, I won't let you down. Your tuition check bounced. My tuition check bounced? Wake up, wake up, wake up! Get out of my room. Yo, without even hearing my plan. Side! A house party. House party? The mother of house parties, man. A pajama jammy jam. <laughs> all proceeds going to the Christopher Robinson Scholarship Fund. Yo, what up, Black? What's going on, man? Name Jamal. Do me a favor. What? Talk white. Love the rap. Everybody know about this part, but the three of you. I know, Grandma. What up with that? Oh, babe. Baby! I want to move. What up with that? You look good. Kid and Play. Full Force. Tisha Campbell. Iman, Queen Latifah, and Martin Lawrence. It's the slamminest party ever. House Party 2. Hello and welcome to our Watch This As An Adult Movie Reviews. I'm your host, Mikkel Ford. We just gonna get right into this movie, House Party 2 from 1991. Let's get to the technical. This movie was directed by Doug McHenry and George Jackson, written by Daryl Nickens and Rustin Kindiff, or Rusty Kindiff, sorry. Uh, the budget for this movie was $5 million, and the box office, it brought in 19.4 million dollars so it made it made a lot of money it, it made its budget back at least um rotten tomato score for this movie is 27 percent i'm not gonna fight that but let's talk about how i saw this movie as a kid i saw this movie on television man i just saw this movie on television I don't really, I don't really have a special story about this movie. Like, I didn't lose my virginity to House Party 2 or something crazy like that. You know, <laughs> like, it's like, it's just basically, I just saw the movie on television. I think I saw like an edited version of the movie. And then I went back and watched the unedited version on like cable. Because I think I saw this movie, like, I saw this movie on like a regular television like it was on like network television or something like that and then I went back and saw the unedited version on like uh HBO or something like that but like it's not really like I said not really a special story about how I saw this movie uh movie starts off a little sad because uh in real life Robin Harris uh passed away who plays a kid who plays kid's father uh, he passed away in real life. He, I think he died before the first house party came out. So he never really got to see himself in house party. So he never, not really, he never got to see himself in house party. <laughs> like he didn't see it because uh, he passed away. So naturally, they killed his character off. So I guess 
uh, plays parents took kid in while he finishes school, like while he finishes high school, which is honestly, that's honestly, that's very nice of them. Cause like, <laughs> I guess that, I guess play told them to do that. It was like, man, my man, my man's like his daddy died, you know, like he needs somewhere to stay. Cause like, that was something that I was thinking about. I just thought about because in house party one, his mom was already dead. And then in House Party 2, his dad's dead. So, like, watching this movie as a kid, like, I never really thought about who was raising him. It's, like, something that just popped up in my head. I was like, yeah, man, I never really thought about that. Because, like, in the movie, he's still pretty much a kid. You know, he's a teenager. So, I'm like, who's who's raising this boy <laughs> uh, while, he gets, while he gets through high school? So, it was, it was uh, Play's parents uh, took him in. And uh, raised him for the duration of his teenage years. But let's get to the main p- plot of this movie. The le- main plot of this movie is that Kid and Sydney, played by Tisha Campbell, are going off to college. Which Kid is going to be the oldest freshman alive going to college because he's like 30 years old in this movie. Because like Kid and Play are like old as f- they're they're old as fuck. They were old as fuck in the first house party movie. <laughs> <laughs> they were like 26 they were like 26 27 years old or something like that playing goddamn teenagers and it was it's like it was just it's just jarring you know it's very jarring because you know you know how old they are you know you know how old they are and it's just like you know these old motherfuckers ain't in they ain't in high school you know <laughs> <laughs> and they got Martin Lawrence hanging out with them. Like, he's even older. You know, <laughs> he looks even older. Like, the whole movie, if you've, seen the first, if you've seen the first House Party, you know, I ain't got to reiterate that shit. But yeah, he's he's gonna be like a 30-year-old freshman in college, you know, <laughs> in this movie. Um, this movie also has a villain, a, a fake talent agent named Sheila, which is played by the model Amon. Uh, she wants to sign Kid and she wants to quote unquote sign Kid and Play to a record deal so that she can produce an album for them. We'll talk more about her a little bit later. Uh, uh, Kid going to college kind of creates a rift between him and Play, so we got that going on. Play uh, feels like Kid is going to college, is going to break up the rap group, but uh kid is kid is like i made a promise to my dad before he died i told him i was going to go to college and that's what i'm going to to that's what i'm going to do so there's tension between the two of them right now but anyway kid gets to college and he meets his roommate which is this white kid named jamal who is a militant uh he's a militant white kid with like dreads and he offers him bean pies and all types of shit. And I believe this actor is a rapper too. I I, I know he's a rapper. I, his rap name his rap name <laughs> slips my mind at this moment. But I believe I believe he's a white rapper. And this is like this is like pre Eminem, so you know he wasn't getting any props as a rapper. <laughs> you know, like this is pre Eminem post vanilla ice i want to say post but this is 91 i think ice ice baby just came out maybe at this point or we like we just getting over ice ice baby and we find out like that vanilla ice is like a fraud and he ain't what he said he was and all this shit and i I guess that arsenio hall review uh interview already happened at this time if you ever check that out Go check out that Arsenio Hall interview with Vanilla Ice. It's comedy. It's straight hilarious. You can find it on YouTube. It's you can find it easily on YouTube. Check it out. It's hilarious. You know, because like he brings flavor flav on. He brings flavor flav on stage with him. He say like flavor flav is my homeboy and all this stuff. And it's just just check it out, man. Like when you got some spare time, if you haven't seen that interview, check out that interview. It's fucking hilarious but yeah man like my man you know my man's not getting the respect because like i said post vanilla ice pre m and them i mean i don't even remember his name so 
<laughs> so that has to say something. I don't remember his name. Um, Sydney also has a militant room, roommate named Zora, played by Queen Latifah. She she's pretty much in this movie to be AJ Johnson's replacement, because uh, uh, AJ Johnson's character does not return for this movie, but Martin Lawrence does. Martin Lawrence returns as Belial, and he comes in like a ball of energy, man. Like like he's only in this movie for like two minutes. The first two minutes he pops up. And he's already coming in like a spider monkey on speed. Like, he's just... <laughs> he's just all over the place, man. Full Force is also back. I don't know why they're back. But they're back. They really serve... They really serve no purpose this time. Like, he, like they serve no purpose. Because... Like, the first movie, I understand, like, they were bullies, they were, like, beating up kid and play, you know, like, the, the whole rest of the movie of the first house party, they're, like, running around trying to chase kid, trying to murder kid and play, like, they were, they were murderers, like, they, in the first movie, like, they were, like, going a bit too far, if you see my first house party review, go check out the original house party review I already did. I review on the original house party you could find out how I feel about that from there but like they were they had bloodlust in the first house party movie and this one they ain't that they ain't that bad so they really serve no purpose in this movie this time around speaking of serving no purpose there's a really unnecessary sex scene uh with play like he's having sex with a girl in the record store you know, and it doesn't lead to anything. It's just play having sex with a girl in a record in a record shop. You know, it doesn't really lead to anything. Like it was just some ego shit. Cause you know how rappers are. Rappers, rappers gotta be like, hey, yo, man. You know, like they got to know that I get bitches. You know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. That's that's just what that's just what rappers do. Like they want they want you to know that the Riz game is strong and the dick game is long, you know, like, that's, that's what they want you to know, so, it was just in there for that, I, it served no purpose, so, let's talk about Amon, Amon comes back to this movie with this sob story about getting ripped off by her, uh, business partner, and how she doesn't have the money to, uh, produce Kid and Play's album, like she's all cry- crying, boo hoo hooing, and all this bull. So, play gives Sheila kids college money. So at this point, kid finds out kid can't pay. He can't pay for school. Side note, another side note: this movie has a lot of racist jokes for no reason. I was just very, just being very racist for no reason. Like there's an Indian stereotype joke in this movie like there's some Indian dude with a turban and he talking like this and all this bullshit and you could clearly understand what he's saying but they make kid like not understand what he's saying he's just like huh what what you say I was like I understand what this man is saying <laughs> I was like I was like you, that's how you could tell that's how you could tell he wasn't like a, a real like Indian you know like he's an American Indian because he doesn't have, he can't even do the accent right, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the guy probably wasn't even Indian, he was probably black, who knows, a black guy that looks like an Indian, or a Latino that looks like an Indian, who the hell knows, but it's a bad joke, Kid also makes fun of an Asian girl who's a potential love interest of his, by the way, like, talk talking about, oh, you going back home to Japan, and she's like, I'm not from Japan, I'm from Texas, but she makes a joke about him, which is not cool either. She was like, you going back to Africa or something? She said some shit like that. And I was like, and then they try to like, they try to like plant a seed that these two are going to get together and like nothing comes of it. Like there's nothing like they have no chemistry whatsoever with each other. They just had this moment and they got like a moment towards the end of the movie where it looks like they about to get together, but nothing happens. Um, like... It's something that I probably thought was funny when I was a kid, but I don't find it funny now. Uh, Kid 
Ken finds out that Play tricked his check off to Amon and or Sheila. Let's call her by her real name. Let's call her by her character's name, Sheila. Finds out that he tricks his uh his check off to Sheila. They find out that Sheila is a fraud and she ran off with the money. Um they try to bring back at this point, like they try to bring back this joke that happened in House Party One of the cops. Like the cops are back from House Party. Well, one of the cops is back from house party one and he's got like a black partner and like his black partner is pretty much you know like one of them cops you know what ice cube said uh black cop showing out for the white cop you know (laughs) it's pretty much he's pretty much that he's the black cop showing out for the white cop they try to bring that joke back uh it's not funny it's not funny at all uh we also get this half-ass story of Kid and Sydney breaking up, which is not earned, by the way, because Sydney is barely in this movie. Oh, uh, like she really gets the shaft in this movie. Tisha Campbell's character really gets the shaft in this movie. Like she really has nothing to do other than to be kid's girlfriend when when she's not kid's girlfriend she's pretty much fucking useless like there's nothing for her to do like except hang out with queen latifah like her and queen latifah have a couple scenes together but like it's just like and then it looks like she's like she's trying to go she's going through like this identity crisis or something like that but it's era is it like she really has nothing to do i'm just gonna keep it at that she has nothing to do um we also have this character in here named Miles, who's uh he's like the financial aid guy, and like he's basically like a code switcher. Uh, he does code switching a lot, where like when he's talking to black people, he's like, "Yo, yo, my brother, what's up, man? What's up? What's going on, my man?" And he's doing all of that, all that stuff. But when a white person comes around and something somebody of esteem, he's just like, oh, hello, sir, how are you today? He turns into goddamn, uh, he turns into goddamn Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> like, well, well, this is a, 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 an astuteous day today, sir. How are you today? He's just <laughs> but we're like, but when, like, he's around a black person, he, he's just like, man, you know what, man? Fuck that cracker, man. He don't know what it's like to be black, you know, <laughs> code switching like a motherfucker but he's also played by the black guy from stargate by the way he's also played by the black guy from stargate which i was like i didn't recognize him with hair i looked up the cast i had to look up the cast and realize that was him i was like yo man that's the black dude from stargate i I didn't know that was him the whole time because i used to watch stargate the uh, tv show i used to watch the stargate television show I know I'm a fucking nerd. I know, but uh, I used to watch the Stargate television show, and this whole time I didn't recognize that. I'm like, hey, that's the guy from House Party too, and now I'm just like, hey, he's the guy from Stargate. But yeah, man, didn't recognize that was him. He had hair, and Stargate doesn't have any hair. He's bald in Stargate. Uh, he also starts pushing up on Sydney, and kid don't like that. Even though he was the one that broke up with her. I don't I don't under, I don't understand that. Uh this movie kind of falls apart after that. Like it's just a bunch of sight gags and goofy shit. Uh they even try to go back to old jokes from the first movie. Like I said, the cop joke, like the cops pulling kid and play in full force cuz full force is there too, like pulling them over. They go back to full, they do a little bit of full force beating up on Kid, but it doesn't go anywhere. All these jokes fall flat. Like, they're not funny. They even break the fourth wall for one of the jokes. And I'm like, oh man, like, y'all should break the, I'm like, y'all should break the fourth wall and realize how bad this goddamn joke is. (laughs) Like, none of these jokes are funny. They're not funny. And like it's like the rest of this movie is filler until they get to the actual house party because like that's when this movie kind of gets semi fun again you know like it gets it gets fun a little bit i get a little bit of the original house party aura when they get to the actual house party like 
about like a good like 15 minutes of the the house party and house party too i'm like okay this gives me that feeling that i felt when i saw the original house party but the rest of this movie the rest of this movie is dry and dull it feels like i'm watching a bad episode of different world you know that's what it feels like feels like i'm watching a long drawn out episode of a different world uh Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence is the high part of this movie. He's the high part of this movie. He's the best part of this movie. He's the only thing that got me through this movie because he's hilarious. Every time he's on screen, I laughed. Every time he said something, I laughed. Other than that, like the rest of this movie is just not the deal, man. Like it's it's just so it's so disjointed. Like when I saw this movie, I saw a movie with an identity crisis like this movie did not know it didn't know what it wanted to be it just didn't know uh, like is it a raunchy sex comedy is it a black college message movie or is it a sequel to house party because it didn't know what to pick. They just needed to pick one. Do you want to be a sequel to House Party? Do you want to be a movie about HBCUs? Or do you want to be a, a raunchy sex comedy? Because there's a lot of sex jokes in this movie. There's a lot of um, just misogyny. And a lot of just like disrespect of women. You know, just a lot of that in this movie. And like I don't I don't even remember that being the case in the first house party. But like they just turn that up to to 11 in this movie. But like they just needed to they just needed to pick what the fuck they wanted to be. What did they want this movie to be? Cuz it's just all over the place. I hate that I have to dump on this movie because I really liked this movie as a kid, but I have to be honest. I have to be honest. I have to be non-biased. Like, this movie is just not that good. It's just not that good. It's not as good as I remembered it as a kid or even as a teenager. You know, it's not as good as I remembered. I, like I said, Martin Lawrence is the only good part about this movie. He's the only thing that got me through this movie. He's funny as hell in this movie. For that alone, I give this movie a 2 out of 5. Join me next week. When I will talk about 2000s Charlie's Angels. Until next time. Peace.